What's going on everyone? This is Will here with the Commander Duo. I uh, have a new video for you guys. This is going to be on a tutorial guide, more of an advanced tutorial guide on Card Conjure and um, GIMP. So this video, I, I know I've had a couple tutorial videos out that kind of give you a direction on everything. This is going to mainly be more of an advanced guide on very specific things, assuming you already have Card Conjure downloaded and you know how to get that on your computer locally. Um, this tutorial will not be covering that. This is only going to be useful if you have Card Conjure installed and you're looking just to improve or learn new ways of creating cards as well as some pretty cool things you can do with GIMP uh, in the post editing. You can also do it with Photoshop if you're more comfortable. This guide is going to specifically cover GIMP because that's uh, GIMP's free and um, that's what I use. So yeah, without further ado, we will uh, go ahead and get started here. Um, so the first thing, of course, is, in my opinion, picking the frames and then, of course, what card you want to do. I have a couple frames that are typically my favorite and they usually tend to be like the Godzilla one. So uh, if your card conjurer doesn't have all of this stuff and it only goes to like right here, you might just have a little bit of an outdated one. I used to only have up to stained glass, so... Um, yeah, again, this is like more newer stuff that's been implemented, but we're going to go all the way down to nickname Godzilla. Um, of course, with altering cards, you tend to use the Godzilla frame just because you can change the name and everything and still retain the uh, second border that shows the original name. So, yeah. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and pick. We're going to be doing a blue card. So normally you can just do add frame and it's gonna add this border and everything else for you as well as if you just like grab that, it'll just grab everything. So this guide is gonna be on how to make a full art card, no borders, no black, full art completely. It's been kind of like my favorite looking card lately. So I'm gonna show you how to do that because it's very specific. So again, we're gonna go back to our blue frame. Before we hit add to frame, you're gonna see a whole bunch of things on the right side. So what we're going to click on specifically is just the pin line, add that. That's going to just add the pin line and nothing else. We're going to go down here. We're basically adding everything but the border. That's how we get everything without the black part on it. And then we're going to want to grab um, our upper part. Same deal. Instead of just adding to frame, you're going to grab the strokeless title, then that, then that. That's just what darkens it pretty much. Um, great, so that looks good. Very, very nice and simple. Um, next thing is uh, the power and the toughness. You can just grab a standard one if you want. Um, I'm going to grab a different one. Now, one thing that's super annoying, if you have auto load always enabled, when you switch between these things, it's going to auto load the type of setup each thing is going to have. Once you're comfortable with your setup, um, I recommend actually turning this off and then that way when you switch between things it doesn't mess anything up so for me I'm gonna grab I actually kind of like the way the eternal night one looks it's a little bit different and it has like the black and just looks uh, look looks like it has more depth I guess we're just gonna grab that you can really grab like anything I mean there's a whole bunch of different power toughness things and little like banners and stuff you can grab if you really want um, this is mainly just to show a couple specific techniques, not necessarily all the different frames you can do. So, okay, we're just going to say we're good there. Um, now the most important part, uh, is making sure you grab a margin. You always need to add your one eighth margin. If you plan on getting these printed, especially through make playing cards, uh, you'll immediately see the difference when I go to the margin. So this is the trick to getting the proper full art, right? When you click one eighth margin, you're going to notice, um, Oh shoot, I guess having the auto load off is going to prevent that. So I'm just going to make sure it's on nickname. Okay, auto load back on because without it, it won't even load the frame, uh, the 1 8th margin. So anyways, now when you click the 1 8th inch margin, you're going to notice this gets bigger looking. See how like it looks wider and then this gets condensed. That's because without even clicking any of these margins, it already actually defaulted us a margin but it's clear, which is what we want. Cause with a completely full art card, you don't want to have like that 
on it. You want it to be completely full art. So that's perfect. When you get to 1 8th margin, don't click any of these. Let it auto load it and you're done. Uh, next, we're going to pick our card. Uh, one card I've really liked playing lately is Captain... <laughs> I do not know how to pronounce this guy. Nagothrod, maybe? Uh, yeah, it's very <laughs> weird to pronounce. Anyways, I think he has an amazing effect. So we're going to pick that guy. Cool. So he automatically loaded. You're going to notice the text looks a little funky. Um, that's perfectly fine. It's actually going to change the way it looks as soon as we start typing things. It's just one of those weird things about Card Conjurer. So I'm going to grab a piece of art. So be right back. We chose this really cool Dark Samus art. Um, so when it loads, you'll just want to size it how you want. Make sure there is absolutely no green showing up. If there is, your card's going to have issues. So I'd say that looks perfect. All right, cool. Um, then we will go to our text, our nickname, and we'll just name our character. Um, it's one of like that's just a nickname Dark Samus has so cool and now you notice like the text kind of like fix itself and looks better so yeah all right next is another cool trick when you're doing full art you you can see here with the text that it's significantly darker behind the text that's mainly to make the text more visible one thing I like to do is actually go in and change the opacity we'll just do it to 70 on everything so it's not so, you know, there's still some darkness, but you can see the art better. You're going to see that it lightened up a little bit. Same goes for, oops, same goes for when I change that. You can see it lightened up a bit and that. Normally on the full arts, you can, I usually go to like 40. So if you look at this big box right here and I go to 40, you can see I can see way more, but then the text does kind of blend a little bit with the art. It makes it a little bit harder to see. So you can play around with the opacity however you want that to be. Um, okay, that looks good. Um, and then of course, if you want to add a set symbol, you can. I have plenty of cool set symbols, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I don't really need to add one. Um, so yeah, everything's good in this regard. Uh, we got our card margined. Um, now one thing that I also like to do part of this tutorial is I kind of like to change up the border and make it a little bit more unique. Um, so I'm going to actually change how the blue looks. Uh, we're going to actually make it a little bit darker and you do that by messing with these until you find a color you kind of like. I want it to be like a rich, yeah there we go, like a rich dark blue. I think that looks way cooler. So we'll do that and then we got to do it to this too. So make that 40, boom. You don't have to do this, but I think it's fun to kind of change the border colors, make it match um, different themes. With altering, it's always fun to be creative and just go out of the box with, with this kind of stuff. So, okay, cool. We are done here. Next is uh, just downloading the card, which will download just your standard copy. And this part is where... Um, where we're going to do the advanced game tutorial. So what you always want to do is grab a downloaded copy of the card as is, um, completely finished. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go in and remove. I know this sounds weird, so make sure your card is exactly how you want it because we're not going to be able to change it later. Uh, we're going to actually remove all of the frames, leaving the text and the mana cost, of course. Looks good. Okay, we're going to download a copy of that. Boom. And then last, we're going to remove everything else. So now we just have a piece of the art, and we're going to download that as well. Probably ask me, like, why, but you'll see in a moment. We're going to go into GIMP here. The standard size should always be 16... I think 1620 by 2220 I want to say we can verify this real quick and we look at this uh, properties oh 16 sorry 1632 by 2220 that should always be the default that MPC produces if you've added your margin so when you're in GIMP you'll set your you'll go to file new 1632 220 
And we're going to actually make three of these. Uh, so you can just hit Control New or just File New. Or sorry, not Control New. Control N or File New. And it's going to make a second one. And then we're actually going to make a third. So you should have three in total. And then this part, we're just going to take our downloads. Doesn't matter how we drop them in. We're going to put each of those downloaded images in each slot. Sweet. Okay. Now the reason for this is we're going to be altering. And one thing I do recommend too is saving. Uh, in case it's like a time consuming process. Um, sometimes GIMP can crash. So let's say Dark Samus. Dark Samus .xcf. And it's just it's just nice to save because it would suck to lose progress when you're um, working on this kind of stuff. So cool. Now that we're saved, we have our three versions. One is the actual card. The second one is the card without the frame, and then the third just being the artwork. So the reason why we go into GIMP um, is we're gonna add some over the top altering. Um, if you've ever seen. Um, if you've ever seen some alters by people where they have art coming up over borders and things like that, I've made quite a few of those. Uh, this is how you'll do it. There's two ways to do it here. So the standard way, if you actually want the art to just pop over everything, is to use this one. So let's just say we want Dark Samus's hand cannon. Um, I guess I should explain here. So you're going to grab the free select tool grab a point to start at. It doesn't matter where. I uh, just want to find a point. That makes sense. I'm going to start at the base of the cannon here. Now you can click each spot or you can just hold and draw. Whatever works best for you, however precise you can be with it. Um, if you're steady with your hand and you can trace it well, you can just click and hold or you can obviously just do that as well. If you ever mess up, you can just press back the backspace and it'll undo what you did, so no worries there. And it doesn't have to look perfect. You obviously want it to look like pretty good. Uh, otherwise, it's going to turn out funky if your lines aren't that great. Um, this cannon's actually kind of confusing me with the shape. There you go. Yeah, I, I didn't even draw that correctly, but it's okay. For the sake of the guide, I'm just showing you. Depending on what you're doing, it can it can be pretty time consuming. Just depends on how complex the shape is. And then since it runs off the screen like that, I'll just click the bottom part like that. It can go off of it. There you go. Just make sure you're grabbing everything. And to zoom in, you can hold control and then move your mouse wheel up and down in case you weren't sure how I was doing that. Obviously the shape of this cannon is a little hard to trace when it comes to the arm of it itself. Let's go like that. Okay, we'll go up to there and we'll go across. You just kind of want to like look where the card's positioned at. Clearly this upper piece isn't going to affect any of that, so that's why I wasn't really caring how much of it I grabbed. Once you're done and you connect the dots, press Control c Move it over to your original card, press Control v to paste, and then we're just going to use the movement tool to position it. Now this is basically where you're just replicating the exact same piece of art in the same spot, and that's what's going to bring it over the top. It's going to look funky until you've lined it up, so pick a place where you can clearly like line it up based off how the image looks. Like for me, I'm going to go right up the bottom, because I can probably get that lined up pretty perfect. Make sure, make sure everything looks the way it should, if the lines are, you can kind of tell that, that I actually did that perfectly um, the way it was supposed to be, so nice. And then when we're done, we can right click and hit anchor. And then as you can see, the arm cannon is now over the text. It does look really cool, but you're gonna run into a problem with this though, where people don't know what your card does and it's kind of awkward to read. So you don't necessarily want to really do this unless you don't care and your friends don't care and you know what the card does, whatever. Um, 
But if that's a problem for you or your friends, there's a better way you can do this. Um, so we'll just undo that, and we're going to go to this one. So this one is actually going to bring the text over the top still. So it, it's kind of interesting how this works. So we're just going to do it really fast this time, just to show you. We're going to grab that arm cannon again. Obviously I'm going really fast, but I kind of get the gist of the shape that I'm trying to grab now. All right. Now when we paste this one, you're going to see a big difference in how it looks. it yeah okay I think I got it all right now anchor it in boom all right now you can see um, how the arm goes over the border so it's like cutting over the border but it's still retaining all of the text you'll know you got it right unless the text looks all janky you can see like there's parts you probably want to clean up and polish so that it goes over exactly how you want it to be um, and then we can also do that for its helmet too. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do its helmet. Um, so control shift A will clear everything that you've done. Then you can just go into here. Lasso again, we'll grab the helmet. Shout out to the artist of this. I mean, they absolutely nailed it. What's their name? Uh, Zuxi. I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyways, they like killed it on the Dark Samus design. Um, okay. Don't forget to credit your artist too, because uh, when you're making these altars, you know they are for personal play, not for selling commercial use. But uh, if you can include the artist name somewhere, I definitely recommend doing that, because um, without artists, we can't make these altars. All right, we'll paste that now. Uh, get that lined up. Uh, don't think I have that perfect. There we go. I think that's about right. Oh, no. Higher. There we go. Cool. Drop it in. Okay. Now, when you do this, obviously it has to kind of like make sense. This looks a little funky. Uh, I'd probably also do the shoulder, like this front shoulder, if I was going to do anything and leave the back shoulder behind it. Um, but this is just an idea, an example of how you can bring certain things over the top. Um, I think it looks really cool. Uh, last thing I want to show you with this is choosing to actually mix some of the way some of the ways that these are done. So like for example, you could actually take some of the lightning and bring it over the top of everything. Um, which I think would look really cool. Uh, so we would use this one. So we'll control shift A. So this is where you're going to spend like probably way more time if you decide to do something like this. So I'm just going to grab the lightning here as best I can anyways. The more precise you can be with something like this, the better it's going to turn out. Okay, I'm only going to just do it to there because it's a long strand of lightning. And when you're doing the press and hold, don't forget to release every now and then. And then that way it saves your spot. Because if you mess up once and you backspace, it's going to clear everything. And that's frustrating. Boom. All right, we got our lightning. We're gonna paste it. Okay, anchor it. Boom. Okay. So obviously it looks kind of weird in just one spot like that, 
but it's kind of cool how when you look at it the lightning's like going over the top and like actually affecting things um i thought that's kind of cool you that might not be the best example of something that you should do but i'm just showing you how you can mix that stuff up uh you can get pretty creative with it looks like that's like a what is that is that a mask I don't know what that is in the... Let's just see what happens if we put that in the front. Kind of curious how it looks. Might look a little weird. But again, we're just doing this to show you how it... How to do it. Okay. Boom. Okay. Just an example of how you can mix and match stuff. Obviously that looks very funky there, um, but even so, you can get very creative with how you want the over the top to look. This is just showing you how to do it. Um, and then the very last step for getting your cards to look even more like pretty and vibrant, um, once you're satisfied with how everything looks, <laughs> clearly not that satisfied with how this looks, but it, it's okay, this is just for a tutorial an example on how to do it um, we're gonna go up to colors saturation and then I usually scale it until I think it's bright and vibrant enough usually I stop right around 1.302 if you go up to like 1.5 certain cards are gonna be a little too saturated but I mean you can pretty much go as high as you want it'll just get more and more saturated you can even go down to like get a black and white effect if you want uh, but I'd say like 1.3 or 1.4 like that looks much much more vibrant rich colors everything looks amazing so just go to file export as put on your desktop name it whatever you want then export usually you don't have to change any of this just make sure your compression level set to max hit export okay boom there we are there's our finished card. We know that it's going to work in MPC because it's fully squared. It has the extra margins. Um, very vibrant. Super cool. And yeah, that's pretty much how you do the overlay over the top um, in both different ways. Whether you want the text to still be there or if you want it to go over the text. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this little tutorial. Uh, I plan on doing more. I know there's a lot of you guys out there. Um, getting into altering and it can be a lot at first especially trying to get card conjure to work and we'll definitely do our best to help with that but we aren't uh, and I'm certainly not you know a specialist in that way luckily for me it's just always worked so I haven't had to like deal with much troubleshooting in that regard they're the the guides that exist out there to obtain it they they worked for me with no issues so you know I, I don't know I can't really help you with the troubleshooting so hopefully if you have card conjurer already this is a guide for you and i hope it helps have a good day guys